thinking today comes around from our lesson uh, from John. I believe, but help thou me in mine unbelief. I think it's a fair start for all, all of us in t today as a, as a prayer, isn't it, really? Help my unbelief. Now at Sunnington, in many of these services, we've had all sorts of people present. You may not believe it, but from Roman Catholics, Salvation Army, Presbyterians, Church of England, Methodists, and nothing. Yeah, that's all great. In fact, it was, uh, I think it was Archbishop Temple who said some time ago, the Christian Church is the one organisation in the world that exists primarily for the benefit of non-members. Thank you for joining us in this series. And you remember that uh, last month, uh, David, I think very brilliantly, in his lovely fireside manner, except there wasn't a fire, uh, told us about St Peter and St Paul in prison. And you remember uh, also that uh, they were in prison because of the establishment and because of, of, of the power of Rome and uh, the Jewish authorities. And he then came up with something quite interesting. He said they did the extra mile, both of them, in their various ways. Now that's quite interesting really at the moment because we're talking about the extra mile, aren't we? This week would have been the London Marathon where many people would have done the extra mile. And that's that fantastic 99 year old who has did all his walking and did the extra mile for other people. That's what it's all about, the extra mile. Now this week, uh, we want to talk about the church and those who have uh, suffered, but this is at the church's hands. You may not believe it, but sometimes the church itself is not very Christ-like. Oh, you are terrified that I'm saying this, but just look at the history in the past. The church sided with the wealthy, didn't it? It sat on the poor. It's incomprehensible. Now, I suppose if Sarah Jane, bless her heart, suddenly spoke in Latin or Greek, it wouldn't mean much to you and it wouldn't mean much to anybody else. The dog agrees with that, by the way, it's outside. But um, that's how it is. But you think, how could possibly be the church being unchristian? Think about it a minute. We're gonna follow the thought quickly today about St. Thomas. St Thomas, I like St Thomas because he's a bit like me. Sometimes I believe and half the time I'm not sure what I believe. But in the end, he was the one person who professed my Lord and my God. And he was martyred. He didn't want to go to India, but he was martyred uh, for his faith. I want to follow his name a bit through history. The people that have been in prison, been in, put in prison, because of the church and its current, its use of the state. Could start with Thomas a Beckett. I went to school in Canterbury and Thomas a Beckett was very well known. And we also used to have a pub called the Full Staff, if you remember that particular time, it was a great thing. But Thomas a Beckett was a, a bit of a lad about town. He got on very well with Henry II. And they got on very well, except that becoming Chancellor, Henry became the Archbishop of Canterbury. And suddenly Thomas suddenly realised that there's more to church than just being powerful and reckless and allowing the church to do whatever they like. And you remember that Henry wasn't too chuffed about this, wasn't chuffed at all. He'll get me rid of this wretched priest, he said. And you remember that the four knights crossed the channel and assassinated him in the cathedral. He went an extra mile. He could have had a jolly good time as Chancellor and the Archbishop of Canterbury. Uh, living off the state, but he decided to change course, and that cost him his life. We come on now to another Thomas, Thomas Aquinas. He was a very f powerful philosopher in Italy. And you know, he was in prison a year because he wanted to go into the Dominican ministry. And uh, he was in prison because people didn't want to do that. 
he came from a well-off family and um, he lived a life of poverty uh, and he also was a very profound uh, a very profound thinker he said uh, to one who has faith no explanation is necessary to one without faith no explanation is possible think about that and that he some of his profound thinking um, of the life of poverty and looking at other people uh, was taken up by the Roman the Catholic Church in 1917 as an official uh, official line. And then we got Thomas More. He went the extra mile. He wrote a book about utopia. And you remember that he realised that the Roman Catholic Church needed reforming. And uh, you remember how he uh, su supported uh, uh, when the king divorced Catherine Aragon, he supported Anne Boleyn. However, he was not very popular in the end because he was outspoken. He said he would die for the, ki for the king's, faithful, as king's faithful servant, but he was God's first. He had a spattering of, of his thinking about communism in many ways. And he thought about the conspiracy of the rich. He lost his life because of that. And then that awful time in this period of reformation, there was Thomas Cranmer, who wrote for us the, the common prayer book, who translated from, from incomprehensible Latin to many of us, uh, except perhaps David Whitehead uh, uh, and uh, the odd person like that. But many of, the, many of the people at church didn't really understand what was being said. They just did, did it to, uh, to keep in with everybody else. And you remember that he, he wrote that. He translated the Bible and many more people could understand it. I've always hated bonfires. And we remember that he lost his life uh, to Mary, who was a Catholic. He was a Protestant. And he lost his life as the 17 martyrs celebrated. How can you say celebrated at Lewis? They were martyrs, Protestant martyrs for their faith. When we see all this death and misery, and greed within the church. You say, where's Christ in all this? He seems missing. And you need to think about this sometimes and, and worry about that, don't we? We are finding ourselves in, in prison this is time. We're finding ourselves doing many extra miles, but I think that's what Christ wanted us to do. When Thomas Cadma died, he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. I see the heavens open and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. That reminds us of St. Stephen, doesn't it, in the Acts of the Apostles, those very same words. But out of all these Thomases comes a very interesting thing, no less than St. Thomas's Hospital. Started after the day of Thomas Becket. Uh, surprisingly, about 1173. And it was an Augustine shelter for the poor, the sick, the helpless, and unmarried mothers. It was there that they printed the Bibles for the very first time. Did you know that? I didn't. I looked it up. And I'm sure, I'm sure somebody else didn't know it as well. But anyway, I, I looked that up. And of course, it was the first place that the Nightingale School started for nursing. Are we coming home now? St. Thomas, the Prime Minister there, the poor, the unmarried mothers. And it was named, renamed after Thomas the Apostle. This is what's being Christ-like 
this extra mile is the thing that I think we're all being asked to do. That little bit extra that we can do to speak to other people, even people that we don't particularly like, not a bad idea, is it? Sometimes that's difficult to use the phone, use any communication you can. But this is, uh, this I'm finding very difficult. I'm not sure what's going on here. But as I say, I believe that help our mind underneath. And if I could manage soon, it would be a miracle for all people. God bless you all.